We live in a world that longs for justice. Me too, George Floyd. Um, and, and we're shocked and outraged when things get swept under the carpet as if nothing has happened. We want people who commit awful crimes to face justice, to answer for their evil behaviour. And yet we're kind of torn because we live in an age and a culture in this 21st century Western world where we recoil instinctively from judgment. Judgment suggests intolerance, it's the risk of offending somebody. And so we've kind of got this internal conflict. We fear being judgmental, but at the same time, eventually, a line is crossed, like with Me Too or George Floyd, and, and we rightly long for justice. In fact, we do more than long for it, we demand it. We, we don't want anyone to get away with it. All of which leaves us with some key questions. What is the moral standard by which we're measuring people against? And who's in charge of holding people to account against that standard? Let's take those in turn. Firstly, what's the standard? Well, to start with, let's agree that the moral standard exists. It has to. If we, if we lose that standard, that straight line, then we lose the ability to have justice. People will just do what they want when they want and everyone will always get away with it. So there is a moral standard. But what is it? Well, a common answer today is this, that to fall from the standard is to do whatever brings harm to the collective good of the people. Okay, well, that sounds good. If somebody brings harm against someone else, whether that's abuse or racism or whatever it might be, then you ought to face justice. But here's the problem with that. Who defines harm? Who defines, who gets to define the collective good? It's in, entirely subjective. One person might have one definition of harm, another person a different definition. And equally, people might define the collective good differently. It's why cultures clash around the world. There are, there are clearly different ways of defining those things. And so that's not a straight moral line. That's a decidedly wobbly one. It's one that can change from one year to the next, from one nation to the next. It's what we're seeing at the moment. The moral standard is just constantly in flux. And so people keep falling foul of it. Okay, that's, that's one issue we've got. The other is this, that the people responsible for holding people to account are flawed themselves. We're always reading about miscarriage of justice stories in the news, people who are locked up for years who shouldn't have been, or people who should have been locked up and never were, people just getting off with a slap on the wrist and a token fine when actually their crime was crying out for a greater punishment. And we hear stories like that and we just think, hang on, does, does justice really just hinge on 12 flawed people in a jury box? And so we're left with this. We undeniably feel the fact that there is a moral fabric to the universe. We, we want justice, but the line keeps seeming to shift. And when justice is left to a dozen ordinary people and a man or woman in a wig, it doesn't always go the way we hoped or expected. We can never be totally sure that the right verdict has been reached. And so we have this longing for justice and yet often things fall woefully short and we're left thinking, surely there must be something better. Surely there must be a standard that wasn't subjective and just changed with the wind. A justice system, a judge who wasn't liable to make mistakes but who acted in love and compassion and got it right every single time. Wouldn't that be great? And so with that, let me, let me introduce you to the God of the Bible. Because God cares about justice way more than any of us do. And two big things that we learn about God and justice in the Bible that deal with our two problems that we've just seen. Okay, firstly, God sets the line and it never wavers. As we read the Bible, we realise that we're not left in the dark about what the moral standard is. And it's a standard that doesn't change with the seasons and that is fixed across cultures and across continents. Ever since the beginning of the world, when God created humanity, the standard has always been love God with all your heart and soul and mind and strength and love your neighbor as yourself. Everything else just hangs off of that. Love God, the one who, who made you and who gives you life above everything else. And then let the overflow of that love for God be seen in a love for others. That's the measuring stick by which everything's held up against. And God has the right to set the bar because he's the one who made everything. He's God. And then secondly, God himself is perfectly just and perfectly loving. He is the 
perfect judge. With him, there is never any miscarriage of justice. And in a world full of seeming injustice, that gives us hope. In fact, though we might look around our world and think that people are getting away with it, actually the Bible reminds us that God's justice is coming. We read in a book called Ecclesiastes in the Bible of how God will bring every deed into judgment, including every hidden thing, whether it's good or evil. God is just and the Bible is clear that he will serve judgment on all who don't make the standard. Nothing is going to be swept under the carpet. It's described in the Bible as the day of God's wrath, his wrath being his personal settled righteous anger, his holy opposition to everything that is evil. Justice is coming. And that's great news in a world full of injustices for all the times that people seem to get away with it. But we can't end there because actually there's a problem. The problem is that we all fall short of the line too. Because think about it. What if somebody uncovered my dark secrets that are tucked away in the closet? Just think back to that line from Ecclesiastes. Everything hidden will be revealed. Everyone will have to stand in the dock, not in front of an aging judge, but in front of the almighty God. And that's the point. We we rightly long for justice. We cry out for it when we see outrageous evil and wickedness, but we don't get to set the standard as to what's evil or not. God sets the standard. And because he's God, the standard is perfection. And so none of us can reach it. There are some sentences in the Bible from a book called Romans that say this. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. By that, it means that we've all turned away from placing God at the centre of our lives and we've turned to other things. We've, we've rejected his right rule over us. And consequently, we've all fallen short of God's perfect standard, each one of us. And so we come to the difficult point of saying that we, we, we want God's justice. We long for it at times, but then we realise that we're caught up in the problem too. And for God to be just, our sin can't just be ignored or winked at. That, that wouldn't be loving. That would be a huge miscarriage of justice. It would be a double standard. Sin deserves punishment. Okay, so what do we do? Well, this is the mind-blowing news of the Christian faith. That there is a way to be free from judgment and for God to still be just. How? God offers to take that justice upon himself. That sentence in Romans carries on. It says, all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. God presented Christ as a sacrifice of atonement through the shedding of his blood to be received by faith. There are some complicated words there. Let me just try and rephrase it. We are justified that means we are declared to be in the right before God by his grace in other words by absolutely nothing we've done just because he lovingly chooses to God declares us right with him the verdict comes back not guilty okay that sounds pretty amazing but how is that just isn't that God just kind of sweeping stuff under the carpet we'll carry on with the sentence it comes about through the redemption that came by Jesus so the sentence is saying that somehow Jesus paid the price, he redeemed us from the judgment that we deserved. Okay, how did that happen? Well, it says that God presented Jesus as a sacrifice of atonement. And, and this is just describing what happened when Jesus went to the cross. You see, when Jesus died on the cross, that was God taking on himself all of the punishment that our sin deserves. Jesus, the only man who's ever lived at God's perfect standard, took the full hit of God's just anger against our sin, which means that we can justly be declared not guilty. We receive what we don't deserve, but not because there's been a miscarriage of justice. Justice happens at the cross. And how do we receive this free gift of grace? See what the sentence says at the end? To be received by faith. That's all it requires. Faith in what? Jesus has done for you at the cross. And that means that anyone, and by anyone I mean anyone, can be justified, declared right before God. Whatever you've done, there's no person who's too far gone. It is, in the words of the famous hymn, amazing grace. 
look, if this world is all there is, okay, if that's the worldview that you operate under, then real injustice arguably just leads to cynicism and despair. Who sets the standard? What is the standard? How do we, how do we know people won't just get away with it? But the Christian can act with hope because we know how the story ends. As we look around at our world, real injustice, though painful, it shouldn't cause us to despair. No, praise God that whether it's at Jesus' cross or whether it's on the last day when Jesus returns to judge, no abuse, no sin at all will ever go unpunished. Mm -hmm.